Do you want to lose weight but struggle to stay committed to a meal plan because you constantly feel hungry? Does food provide you comfort when you are bored, angry, lonely, or sad? If so, you are in the right place. My name is Kristen Jones, and I'm a life coach specializing in emotional eating and weight loss, and I'm also a lifelong emotional eater. I want to provide you with information, motivation, and support so you too can learn to manage your issues with food and develop a healthy relationship with yourself. Welcome to the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Podcast. Welcome to the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Podcast. My name is Kristen Jones, and thank you so much for joining me this week. We have such a great topic tonight. So what we are going to be discussing this week is it is probably the most talked about, the most commonly asked question that I get asked, as well as the biggest thing that plagues not just emotional eaters, but I think people in general, and that is nighttime eating. And nighttime eating is something that plagues so many people. I know it was a huge issue in my life for a very, very long time. And so um, I just, I always try to listen to what my community talks about and what issues uh, are coming up and try to address those. And this has been, it is, again, is the most talked about um, ailment problem that an emotional eater has. Um, and that in it's emotional eating as well as just people in general, I think, but mostly emotional eaters. So again, that is what we're going to tackle is nighttime eating. Is it a problem for you? And what can you do about it? And I am going to share with you some things that truthfully don't have anything to do with food. So I'm not going to tell you to empty out your, your cabinets. I'm not going to tell you to get rid of all the food. I never believe that that is the answer because that's not addressing what the real issue is. And so it's really important to make sure that we are addressing the underlying issues because as all of us know, as emotional eaters, the issue is not the food. It's what's behind it. It's the, it's the, the feelings that are driving these actions that we're taking that aren't serving our lives. And so we really need to, to dig deep and, and to figure out what is that all about. And so we're going to talk about that today. And I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and if you're listening on the podcast, I am welcome. And I am coming to you live from the Breakthrough Emotional Eating community on Facebook. If you are not a member of the community and you are listening to this on the podcast, you want to come and be a part of this community. So again, amazing, amazing group of individuals, super, super supportive. Um, we have had tons of new members come in. People are coming in, they're sharing their stories. They're um, posting their meal plans. They're really um, taking proactive steps to not only address their issues with emotional eating, but also their issues with their weight, how they feel about themselves, their thought process. We do not, we are not a group that is about dieting. We are a group that is about looking at our thoughts and our beliefs about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves and then taking that information and trying to make it so it works and serves our lives in the best possible way. So if you want to become a part of that and you think that is something that you really need in your life, please, please come and join us. If you want to go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash food breakthrough and become a part of our community. Again, we welcome you. We want you there. And it is just, it's, it's a happen in place, but it's also an incredibly supportive and nurturing and encouraging community. So please, please, please come join us. Now, um, I always will do a client or a member shout out. And today I want to do, I've actually done a, a, a shout out in regards to this member before, but she has just been absolutely amazing with her commitment to herself. So Crystal, I am going to call you out. So Crystal knows who she is and I'm going to call her out because she has been working probably for the last, I think since Jan, oh, I think it was, I think she was saying January, maybe beginning of January, maybe end of December. Uh, she came into the group. She's a member in the group and she has taken uh, the information that I've given, the information that I've provided for her. And she was already 
making some changes to uh, to her life and making changes to to how she was eating and how she was thinking. And in the past month, month and a half, she is down 15 pounds. And this is her doing this on her own. She's posting her meal plans. She's posting her exercise routines. She is encouraging and uplifting other people. And, and, and as she has said, it, it's, it's all been about her mindset. It's all been how she's been thinking about herself and the thoughts that she's been having. And, and she's seeing the progress and she's seeing the successes. And so Crystal, I am just so incredibly honored to have you as a member of the community and having you serve as such a valuable role model to other people in the group. It is really, really amazing. And it's, it's not about, it's not about the 15 pounds. It's not about that. It's about what you're learning and then what you're sharing with other people and how just truly inspiring you are as well as encouraging and motivating to other people. So thank you so much for what you're doing for the group and I appreciate it. And I just want you to keep on doing what you're doing and you're just one day at a time getting towards that weight loss goal. So again, super happy that you're with us. All right, on to the topic of the day and oh, such a loaded topic. So. Um, we are going to be talking about the, we're going to be talking about um, the, I want to make sure I was recording. Here we go. We're going to be talking about nighttime eating. So I am going to shock you all. And again, as I say, I, I don't, this is not going to be, what do you need to remove from your house? What foods do you need to not have around the house? That's not what we're going to be talking about tonight. What we're going to be talking about tonight is what do you need to be thinking in order to move past your emotion? Your, your, it is fully emotional eating at night because we know, we know, and I think I can speak for most people. If you've had dinner, eating two hours later, is not really necessary. It isn't necessary. So every person that I've spoken to when we talk about nighttime eating, to a person, they always say, I'm not hungry. I know I'm not hungry. And I, and I eat anyway. And, and that is, that is telling you that there is something else. There's something behind it. There is another thing that you need. So I'm going to have you, I'm going to give you three things to examine, to look at in your own life. So if you have a piece of paper and a pencil and something to write, you know, something to write down, you know, something to write on and something to write with, you're going to want to look at these three things and you're going to want to see what you maybe need to look at what you may need to tweak. And it's not going to be a big thing, but it's going to be a powerful thing to move you towards taking those steps to eliminating your nighttime eating. So the first thing I want you to think about is what are you telling yourself about your nighttime eating? So when I say that, what I mean is, do you keep saying to yourself, I have an issue with nighttime eating. I'm a nighttime eater. I eat at night. I eat when I'm not hungry. Gosh, I have a problem with sweets after dinner. I'm going to tell y'all that is your first and biggest issue. So I know there's a lot of people watching right now. If you are a person, if you have said that in the last week, I am a nighttime, I, I'm a snacker. I snack at night. I eat at night. If you are saying that to yourself, Let's be honest. Let's own our stuff here. So I just want you to say nighttime in the comments. If you are telling yourself and reinforcing to yourself that in fact, you are a nighttime eater, that would be the first thing I would tell you that you need to change. You need to stop saying that. If we keep telling ourselves things that we're doing that aren't working for us, that just doesn't make any sense. That we, why would we continue to tell ourselves something that we don't want to keep doing? So the thoughts, and we think we talk about this all the time in the group, the thoughts that you have about yourself, the thoughts that you think, they create the emotions that you have and the feelings that you have. And they in turn, we don't ever do an action unless there's a feeling behind it. So if you keep telling yourself, I am a person who is a nighttime eater, if you keep telling yourself that, that is what you are going to keep being, is a nighttime eater. You are going to be the snacker after dinner. So first and foremost, you've got to stop doing that. We have to stop. We have to start changing the things we say to ourselves. So 
You are not. You are, and, and I'm going to I'm going to also tell you that you never want to say I am not something because the universe, God doesn't hear the word not. So we want to say uh, and this is actually, it's really interesting. I just got off the phone, uh, having a, a client, a session with a client. And the thing I told her to tell, to say to, to say to herself was I, my, the last food I eat is my dinner. After dinner, I stop eating. I no longer eat after dinner. That's what I told her to tell herself in the morning, that that's what she needs to plant in her brain and tell herself. I don't eat after dinner. I eat my dinner and then I'm done. Those are the statements you need to make to yourself. And I know some of you may be rolling your eyes going, what the heck is that going to do? That gives your brain direction. It tells your brain what you're going to do. So that primal brain doesn't kick in and say, oh, M&Ms, it's a great time for those, even though we're not hungry. And so we have to, all of us, we have to support ourselves and tell ourselves exactly what we want to do. So dinner is the last thing that you are eating at night. That's it. That's what you tell yourself. You got to stop with the talk of I'm a nighttime eater. I snack all the time. This is what I do. No, it's not what you do anymore. Tell yourself that you eat dinner and then you're done, period. That's number one. Number two, you have to ask yourself the question, is this a behavior? that now has become a habit. Is this now just what you do? And it's become now the normal thing that you're doing. Is it become a habit? And with any habit, we can just make tiny little changes to move us forward and to move us towards breaking habits that are not serving our lives. If nighttime eating, if eating after dinner is not serving your life, if it's causing weight gain, if it is causing you to be uncomfortable, I will tell you, I know this for a fact because when I was a teacher, I would get home after school. And I can remember being so excited sometimes because I would get home. And if I got home from work early, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have like the whole evening to myself. And then the panic would set in of like, oh, I have the whole evening to myself. What do I do? And then I would just eat the whole time from, from five o'clock until I went to bed at 10 o'clock. And I would feel so, I'd wake up in the morning and I would feel so sick and so nauseated and just like, oh, I just felt awful. And so I really want, if you are a nighttime eater, if you're somebody who eats at night and you wake up and you feel sick in the morning and you don't feel good, I, I this is, I'm speaking to you. You need to recognize that is not good for your body. It's not good for our bodies to eat food and then go to bed. First off, physiologically not good. But from a habitual standpoint, continuing to do something that doesn't serve us doesn't make us feel good. It doesn't because it doesn't make any sense. We start to think, well, why am I doing this? I'm just going to say hi to a couple people. Hi, Mary. Hi, Linda. Hi, Christine. I just want to make sure I can see everybody here. Um, so that just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for us to do that. So we really do need to um, to really to really think about that. Is this just become a habit? And it is something, and again, it goes back to that first thing. Is it something that we just keep doing? So here's what I'm going to challenge you on. After dinner, what is it that you, and these are questions I want you to ask yourself. After dinner, what is it that you really need after dinner? It's not food, but you're giving yourself food. So there's something else that you need. And if you're not figuring out what that is, it's going to make it really hard. Because again, you can get rid of all the food in the world. But there's still a store you can leave and you can go down to. I mean, there's still ways you can get food. But what is it? What need is food fulfilling in you? What do you really need in the evening? Do you need conversation from your partner? If you don't have a partner, are you alone? Are you lonely? That was my issue. My issue was I was alone and I didn't, I loved, I, I kept telling myself I wanted to be alone, but the reality was I didn't want to be alone. I didn't like being by myself in the evenings. It made me sad. And so what did I do? I ate to keep myself, to keep myself happy to keep myself from, from not feeling sad because I was alone. 
And so what is it that you, and, and, and truthfully, I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out and say, sometimes we're in a relationship and we are lonelier than when we are by ourselves. So think about that. What is it that you are trying to replace? What feeling, what emotion, what are you trying to give to yourself that you're doing with food that you actually should be seeking out that from something someplace else? Okay. That, and that's a tough one. That's a hard question to ask yourself. What is it that you are really, what is it that you really need? And what are you not getting that you really need that you're trying to fill with food? That's what I want you to think about. I can't answer that for you, but you need to really think about what is it that you need? Okay. So that's the second thing. The third thing is how are you talking to yourself in the morning about your day? So I'm going to back the truck up here. So if you are a person who wakes up in the morning and thinks in your head, oh, all these things, I have all of these things I have to do today. Oh my gosh, I have to do that. I have to go to work. I have to drive the kids to school. I have to make lunches. I have to make dinner. I have to do this stupid meeting. I have to, that, 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 all these have tos. Okay. When you position yourself as the victim, which when you think about all the things you have to do, you kind of become a little bit of a martyr. I'm going to just call some people, you know, call it. Some of you are going to be like, oh, she's talking to me. I'm going to call some of you out. You, if you put yourself in that position of being a victim, because you have to do all these things. When you get to the end of the day, you are going to need a reward because you've told yourself you're the victim. You have to do all this stuff. You have this such a hard time. Are you positioning yourself that you are going to need a reward after dinner? You're going to need a treat. You need something to get you through in order to make yourself feel like it's okay that you had to do all these things. The food is not the issue. The, the treat, the reward, not, not finding a healthy snack. Some people are like, oh, I try to find a healthy snack. No, that's not the issue. The issue is why is it that you aren't grateful for what you're doing during the day? Why is it that you're putting yourself in that position of being the victim where then you get to reward yourself? We're never victims unless we want to make ourselves victims. And so what I would encourage you to do is just put a shift and a change to how you think about your day. Because I could, I know for me personally, I could sit, I could wake up in the morning and think, okay, what do I have to do today? Oh my gosh, I have to, like, I, I need to go. I need to make sure I, I touch base with all, you know, all my, my people in my group and, oh, there's all these things I have to do. I mean, gosh, I have to go and I have to respond to, respond to instant message, you know, respond to my personal messages. I have to respond to people's comments in, in things I've posted and blah, 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 blah. You know what? I never go into my day that way. I go into my day thinking, this is what I get to do. This is the choice that I've made. And I am so happy that I've made this choice because this is fulfilling my life. It's, it's giving me my purpose and it's giving me a place where I can help other people. And so I go into my days feeling like I am so blessed every single morning when I don't have to get up by the alarm, when I wake up on my own and I think I get to do all these things today. I don't ever feel like a victim. And it's because I, I phrase my day and how blessed I am for every single thing I have. And so I want each of you to really look at your lives in a different way. And you may feel like, well, oh, I got to make dinner for the kids. People, you got kids. You, you, how blessed is that? How blessed are you to have children? How blessed are you to have people in your lives who, who love you and appreciate you and all the things, instead of saying, I have to do these things and I should do this, how about we phrase it, I get to. I'm blessed because I get to do this. So anyone who knows me knows I am all about the gratitude. So if you are not doing gratitude first thing in the morning, you need to be doing that. And you need to be changing how you look at your day. Because again, putting that thought in your head of how blessed you are and how fortunate you are to move through your day, that is going to change how you feel inside. And it is going to change how you react to all the circumstances around you. And so your reactions and how you react to things around you is going to impact, again, 
how you feel. When we don't feel good, we don't make good choices. We turn to food and we look for solace in food. We've got to stop doing that. We've got to put ourselves in the best possible position to feel as blessed and fortunate about our lives and think, how lucky am I to get to do whatever it is that I get to do? I am so lucky. That is going to change. That is going to change how you go into your day and change that evening when you come down to, okay, I need a reward. No, it's going to be, a, you know what? It's going to be a positive thing that's going to be amazing for you and it will help you make the better choices for yourself when you get to that latter part of the evening. But we also have to look at the two other things we talked about, which is, is it a behavior and a habit? And what are you doing? What are you doing that's not working? Okay. We have to look at that. You have to look at what is not working for you in your nighttime routine and you need to make a change. Just sitting there thinking, oh, I hope it, I hope I don't eat tonight. That's not going to do it. You've got to decide. We've got to take control of our lives and decide, you know what? Sitting in front of the TV has not worked for the last three months. So what do I need to do? Maybe I need to listen to a podcast. Maybe I need to, um, maybe I need to read a book. Maybe I need to go online and buy a course and learn how to do something. Maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe I need to give back to myself and take care of myself in the evening. How many of you would take a bath in the evening? How many of you do self-care in the evening? You might be needing to do after dinner. Have your dinner and then do something nice for yourself. Do care for yourself. Take care of you. How many of us do that? We don't do it often enough. That needs to be a regular thing that you get to do every single night. And I can promise you, if you start taking care of yourself and you feed yourself in a different way, you're not going to need food. There you have it. All right. So those are our three things. Again, the three things I want you to look at. What are you telling yourself about your snacking habits? We need to say, I eat dinner and my eating is done for the day. I'm done. And not because I'm depriving myself, but because I love myself and I don't need to eat anything else. Second thing, is it a behavior or is it a habit? And if it's habitual, how can I change it? What do I need to be doing in the evening? What am I trying to avoid my emotions? What am I trying to avoid by eating? And what do I need to do instead? Take care of myself. And lastly, starting in the morning, how are you viewing your day? Are you looking at your day as an I get to, as opposed to I have to? I want you to shift that, that thought pattern Make it how blessed you are, how fortunate you are to get to do whatever it is you can do during the day, and you will not need to be a victim and need to be re rewarded at the end of the day. So I want each and every one of you to put these things into play, and I want you to see the changes that it's going to make. I promise you, this is not about food. It's about how you feel about yourself. It's about your thought process, and we have to start addressing things where it needs to be addressed, which is inside our heads and how we feel about ourselves. So I am going to take a couple questions here. So I'm going to look, I know I saw a question about intermittent fasting. So I'm going to just scroll here. Hold on a minute. Let me make sure I'm at the top of the page. Did you do? I am. Okay. Let me look for some questions here. I know, I think it was Stacey. Okay. I had, yes, you always sleep worse. That is so true, Amy. Yeah, you have to. Oh, chamomile tea, so good for sleep too. Uh, let's see, I saw a question. Okay, Linda, you brought something up really great. Okay, so husband eats in the evening and you want to eat with him. Okay, we all have to remember, we can only be responsible for ourselves and for our behaviors and our choices. What other people do is their business. What other people do and their opinions of us is none of our business. So we do not need to care about what other people do. We have to do what's right for us. So uh, my, my advice to that would be husband can do whatever he wants. You do what's right for you. What's the best thing for you. You're not being left out. You're taking care of yourself. So that's what I want you to remember. Um, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Oops. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, no, no, no. Okay. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. And again, I want people to really pay attention because I'm seeing some self-defeating thoughts. We have to start thinking positively about ourselves. We have to make it where we are really 
Like we just, we can't keep reinforcing negative things about ourselves. We really, really can't. Gina Birch, no, I am lucky. Okay. Not you. I am. I am lucky. Um, oh, adult coloring books. Amy Fisher, that is a great idea. Adult coloring books. That is, that is so, so cool. I really, really love that. Um, um, okay, Linda, you get hungry after four hours. You need to go to bed earlier. Sorry. <laughs> you do need, you need to go to bed earlier. It's, it's, and also remember we stay up too late. At, if we stay up too late at night, we sleep or sleep deprived. Then that sets the whole thing off in the morning of, of not having enough energy. And then we need, and we crave sugar. Um, Stacey, you asked a question about intermittent fasting. Okay. Thoughts on intermittent fasting. Okay, so I'm just going to give you my little nutshell thoughts on intermittent fasting, and you can take it for what it's worth. Um, I have been intermittent fasting like back in the day. I've been intermittent fasting for so long, and I didn't even know it was intermittent fasting. When people started talking about it, I was like, uh, that's just what I always do. And so it's it's just always been something for me that I have done. So I, 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 would, I absolutely am an advocate of intermittent fasting if, and here is the if. I think that oftentimes emotional eaters need to be very, very careful when it comes to intermittent fasting. Um, it, it, I was trying to do it when I did not have a handle on the mental and emotional part of my emotional eating. And what would happen is I could intermittent fast for, what would do, 20, 22 hours um, in a day. I do, I, I would, I would fast for a long time. And then when I did eat, it, people needed to watch their fingers and toes because I would have eaten them off as well. Um, you really have to be very, very careful about really not, because it can really, intermittent fasting can actually become something that can trigger binge eating. And so I would really, if you want, and with, with my program, the way I ask people to, I ask people to eat and I ask people to go four hours in between their meals with the exception, obviously of your nighttime, that is when you're doing your longest fast. So you're stopping eating usually at seven o'clock. I recommend stopping three hours before you go to bed. Um, you'd not eat three hours before dinner, before bedtime, because you're not meant to be processing food while you're sleeping. Your sleep is meant to be rejuvenating and re-energizing your, your body cells and your digestion should not be happening at that time. And so it's really important to give yourself that time. So you stop eating at seven, you go through the night, you wake up, maybe you have lunch, you have, sorry, you have breakfast. If you eat breakfast, you have breakfast at 10. That's a 15 hour, that's a 15 hour fast. That's great. That's a great fast. Um, 16 and eight is usually the, um, the beginning fasting for intermittent fasting. I and mean, you can go as long as you want. But what I would say is if you want to do it, that's fine, but you still need to follow the tenets of what I talk about, which is you're obviously going to be hungry at the end of that fast, but you need to stop eating when you're satisfied. And sometimes after going such a long time without food, you can eat very quickly you can eat too much too soon, and you can pass that window of satisfaction very, very quickly. So it is very, very important that you really get to the place where you feel very comfortable with how you feel about your, um, about your emotional eating. You feel like you have a good handle on it, and you can actually eat in a way that is not going to lead into a binge. So we have to be very, very careful about that. Um, like I said, I, I was intermittent fasting because I was usually eating so late at night that I was not usually hungry until halfway through the next day because I just, I, I would wake up and I'd feel nauseated. Once I stopped eating late at night, I definitely was able to go longer in the morning. I didn't wake up, I didn't wake up feeling sick, but I was actually able to get through the mornings a lot easier and not feel like I had to eat. And I could, I, I, right now I probably stop eating it. It, depending on the on the night and what's going on between seven and eight o'clock at night, and then I don't eat again usually until noon or one o'clock, and so and that's just that's just because that's the way my body works, and I like to work out in the morning, and I like to work out on an empty stomach, so it, you can absolutely decide that, but I really want people to pay attention to what does it do to you psychologically, what does it do to you as you are eating, are you feeling like oh my god I've got to take into so much food. That's not, that's not the idea of intermittent fasting. 
So I really want to make sure that people are very cautious about that. And you really pay attention to how it makes you feel. If it makes you feel anxious and you feel like you just inhale food when you actually do eat, then I would not recommend them. So we have to be really careful about that. Okay. I want to make sure there's no other questions. Do, 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 do. Um, all right. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. I, all sorts of you, I, so many of you have so many great ideas about things that you can do. I do want to just make sure, oh, what about protein replacement meals and bars? Okay. That's a great question, Linda. And I am going to tell you that I only advocate that people eat foods that they love. So if you can honestly say, oh my God, those meal replacement bars are so good and I love them. If you can say that like super honestly and that you really feel that way, then go for it and eat them. They're not what I, they're not what I like to eat only because I really like to eat foods that are like, that aren't so artificial. I, I feel like a lot of the, like the energy bars, the protein bars are there's just a lot of chemicals in them. There's a lot of additives. And I would rather have you eating foods that are more in their natural state. And so, um, but if that's something that you like, you know, that's fine. But I really, I advocate for people really enjoying the foods that they eat. So eat what you eat, what you want to eat. And, and then I, I'm going to have to comment on something in just a second, but I got to finish my thought. Eat what you want to eat, be happy with it. Eat when you're hungry, stop when you're satisfied. Carol, I don't know how to say your last name. Sieg, Diamond Art. Oh my gosh, that is so crazy. I just was introduced to Diamond Art by one of my clients. She showed me the, this thing she was doing and I had never heard of that before. And now it's the second time in two days, someone's talking about Diamond Art. So that's cool. I love that. Um, yeah, so Diamond Art, something. But again, I'm not advocating and I'm not telling you to distract yourself. If you need to feel productive, if you need to, if you need that, like, I want to make something, I feel creative. You, if you may, if that, you know, just, just gets you excited about your creativity, then do that. Don't do it to distract yourself. We are not distracting ourselves. We really need to look at what is it do, that I really need? What do I need to feel fulfilled? That's what we need to do. Okay. And if diamond art, or if, you know, doing the coloring is something that like makes you happy and it's like, oh, this is so cool. I really like creating things then do that, but don't do it as a distraction. Do it because it fills you up and it's something that you want to do. Okay. That's super important. All right. I am going to sign off. Thank you so much for those of you who've listened to the podcast. Thanks. Thank you so much of you. So much. <laughs> can't get my words out. Thank you so much to those of you in the community that have been on this, um, this live. I appreciate you being here. I'm so happy. I hope that so much, I hope that what I said really hit home and gave you some ideas about the things that you can look at in order to, you know, address your issues with, with nighttime eating and then at the same time, taking care of yourself, it is all about self-love. It's about us taking care of ourselves. And please, please, please remember how important you are. Remember your feelings are important. Your thoughts are important. What you think about yourself, what you say about yourself, both inside your head and outside to other people. Make it count. Be your own best friend. And all of this will become so much easier. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for listening on the podcast, and I will see you all next week. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. For more information on emotional eating and losing weight, please go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash food breakthrough and join the Breakthrough Emotional Eating community. I hope to see you soon.